A to Z of ceramics. A is for alphabet. Here we have a Victorian alphabet plate with an alphabet border which is very educational and it illustrates a scene from Daniel Defoe's novel Robinson Crusoe and this was a part of large series, a large series of plates with illustrations from this novel. Um, the back tells us it was made by the Brown Hills Pottery of Tunstall in Staffordshire and it has a Victorian registration number. Um, this scheme started in 1884 um, and this number signifies that the design was registered about 1887. A is for alphabet. A to Z of ceramics. B is for bargeware, uh, also known as Mesham ware, as it was made in the villages around Mesham near Church Gresley in Derbyshire. Um, it's known as bargeware because people using the canals would order this um, and you could have it personalised with a little motto or your name um, and also a date sometimes. The dates are found from 1876 to 1916 giving us a good idea of the date range of this material. Um, the body is sprigged with colourful motifs and typefaces used for the mottos. And I rather love this teapot. I used to have five of these, but my wife absolutely hates them. And so I've only got one left. There we are, marital harmony. But I kept the one with the little teapot on the lid of a teapot. And that's rather nice. B is for bargeware. A to Z of ceramics. C is for chamber pot. Uh, I won't be demonstrating the use of this item. Chamber pots are frequently found from the 17th century onwards as internal cesspits were replaced by external privies in people's houses. They feature a nice broad rim for ease of sitting, I said sitting, and are produced in a dazzling range of fabrics and decorative styles. This one is a spongeware one with sponged printing around the outside and the rim. No maker's mark, so we don't know who made it, but it's probably early 20th century. C is for chamber pot. A to Z of ceramics. D is for Derbyshire stoneware. A lot of stoneware was made in the Derbyshire area at lots of different factories. Often has a very lustrous brown glaze and throughout the 19th century a characteristic of this stoneware is the use of rouletting. Earlier on, just a simple band. This is applied with a wheel while the pot is leather hard. But as the century wore on, you get bands of mysterious characters, look almost like hieroglyphics, um, each made again with a wheel, a repeating pattern. D is for Derbyshire stoneware and its mysterious hieroglyphics. A to Z of ceramics. E is for engine turning. Now in pottery terms an engine is a small machine like a lathe which combining different cams and different blades could be used to make great variety of shallow geometric regular decoration on the body of a pot. Um, evidence for these is first seen in the 1740s but they really came into their own in the 1760s and afterwards when they were found ideal for decorating dry bodied stonewares such as this rather nice neoclassical black um, basalt teapot from the early 19th century. It has engine turning on the body and also on the lid um, and it's designed really to catch the light especially by candlelight which you imagine most of these pieces would have been seen in in the Georgian period. E is for engine turning. A to Z of ceramics. F is for feather edge. Now feather edge is a moulded rim design encountered mostly on cream wares of the 18th century and these are wasters. Um, they're not glazed which is why they're not really cream coloured. From William Great Batch's factory Fenton in Stoke and they date from the 1760s to the 1780s. So that's feather edge, not to be confused with 
shell edge, which was used mostly on pearl wares from the 1780s to around the 1840s and has that shell design on it. F is for feather edge. A to Z of ceramics, G, is for ginger beer. Now millions upon millions of these humble stoneware ginger beer bottles with their distinctive shape were thrown each by hand in the 19th and 20th centuries. This one was made by Joseph Ball and Son of the Denby Pottery and dates from around 1850 to 1870. It's otherwise unremarkable and just like its brothers and sisters, apart from the numbers here on the shoulder. The number says one million and it shows that this particular bottle was a presentation piece awarded to a potter who during a, around a 10 year period had thrown one million stoneware items for Joseph Ball and Sons. G is for ginger beer. A to Z of ceramics. H is for handle. And what a handle this is. So this is a medieval handle which I found on the Thames foreshore. Surrey whiteware, it dates from about 1350 to 1500. And the potter has stabbed it and slashed it. And this partly to help with firing, but I think also a chance for decoration and to show this potter's individuality. Would have come off a very large vessel, large jug, or perhaps um, a cistern. And you can see inside the finger marks where the potter has attached the handle to the body of the vessel. H is for handle. A to Z of ceramics, I is for inkwell. Now these humble items, and I do like the humble items as well as the rare and interesting items, um, are designed to put into a desk, um, typically in a school, and you can imagine generations of Victorian children and Edwardian children dipping their pens into these little ink wells, trying not to blot their work. I is for ink well. A to Z of ceramics. J is for jelly. Um, jelly moulds, um, many ceramic jelly moulds were made in the Georgian and Victorian period, as well as many metal ones. Um, they're quite thick walled, and obviously the design is on the inside so that when you mould the jelly it comes out shaped like that. This is a very small one. Um, jellies were a regular um, course at large Georgian and Victorian meals um, and there would have been much larger ones with a whole range of different decorations. So jelly on a plate with a ceramic jelly mould, Victorian in date. J is for jelly mould. A to Z of ceramics. K is for kiln, or in this case, kiln prop or kiln ring, uh, or kiln furniture, really um, described for anything that is used just in the kiln during the firing process that will separate or support pieces of pottery. These are ring props. This is a very large one. Um, they come in much smaller sizes as well. And they're mid 17th century in date from the borderware industry, the Surrey Hampshire borders. Um, and this would have been a ring prop, so it would have been a ring with just squeezed little projections there, which would have separated pots in the kiln. And obviously, if they're glazed, there's always a danger of them sticking together. And these props would have prevented that. K is for kiln furniture. A to Z of ceramics. L is for lattice. Now, lattice decoration made by scoring lines into the surface of the pot is a very common decorative motif on Roman pottery. Uh, this is grey ware, but you also find it on other types of pottery. Now, the angle of the lattice can be a clue to dating a piece. So this piece has an obtuse lattice and it dates to after 220 AD. Pieces with an acute lattice will date from the early Roman period up to 200 to 220. There's a slight crossover between obtuse and acute lattices. L is for lattice. 
A to Z of ceramics. M is for mocha. Now, mocha decoration is a form of industrial slipware, and what the potter did would just drip a few drops of a solution known as a tea onto the surface of the slipware, and then it would branch out in a dendritic form to make decoration that looks like trees or seaweed. Um, in its day, this was a very inexpensive type of pottery, and this one, this mug, was actually used in a pub or an inn or a tavern in Victorian times, and it has the Victorian excise mark on it. M is for mocha. A to Z of ceramics. N is for Nottingham stoneware. There was a thriving stoneware pottery industry at Nottingham from the 1690s to around 1800, of which this humble 18th century jug is a very small example. They were capable of making very impressive pieces, such as this bear. The head comes off, is a cup, and the body is a flask, and it's decorated with chips of pottery to simulate the bear's fur. And this is a stunning example of Nottingham stoneware. N is for Nottingham stoneware. A to Z of ceramics. O is for oil jar. Now oil and olive oil have been imported into this country since the Iron Age. Um, this is an 18th century oil jar with a very nice stamp on it. Uh, it tells us that this particular oil jar was made in Montelupo in Italy and it's for olive oil and it has the Florentine lily on it and the initials IF. We don't know who IF or JF was, probably the owner of the olive oil grove or plantation. You can tell by the thickness and weight of this shard that it would have come off a very large pot and some of these olive oil pots would be up to a metre tall and these were imported from Italy into this country in the 18th century. O is for oil jar. A to Z of ceramics. P is for porcelain. During the 18th century, huge quantities of Chinese export porcelain, um, such as this piece, were imported into the British Isles and were an affordable way of people to own porcelain. Porcelain is fired at a very high temperature and is translucent. Light shines through it. Um, the English also produced their own porcelain from the 1740s, beginning at Chelsea. And this is a piece of um, Worcester porcelain with their little mark on it and dates from the 1750s or 1760s. The difference between the two, the Chinese export porcelain is hard paste, very glassy, and the English porcelain is soft paste with a much softer, warmer body, not so sharp and glassy. Soft paste porcelain survived into the early years of the 19th century when it was rapidly replaced by bone china. P is for porcelain. A to Z of ceramics. Q is for Queen. Queen Anne, in this case. I hope you can see that. Um, this tiny piece of stoneware um, is from a vessel known as a gorge. The form is a gorge, which is a round, globular drinking vessel uh, with a vertical reeled neck. And on that neck, there is a little stamp, in this case, with a crown and underneath the letters AR, standing for Anna Regina, Latin for Queen Anne. So we can date this tiny piece of stoneware to her reign, 1702 to 1714. And the mark is an excise mark, which from 1700 onwards, um, the government made people mark pottery vessels and metal vessels that were used in public spaces such as inns and taverns to ensure they were the right capacity and the innkeeper wasn't defrauding his customers by using a small measure. So Q is for Queen. A to Z of ceramics. R is for Roman. Also R is for reduced. So R is for reduced Roman. Now all these shards of greyware, Roman greyware, are from the Alice Holt pottery industry, um, just outside Farnham, 
and uh, they produced greyware from the first century to the early fifth century. Now an expert potter can make from the same clay reduced pottery and oxidised pottery. Now reduced pottery is made by starving the kiln of oxygen at the right moment and the pottery ends up grey, like this greyware, Roman greyware. Um, if you allow oxygen into the kiln you end up with red clay, red firing clay. So R is for Roman and R is for reduced. A to Z of ceramics. S is for Sunderland. S is also for slipware. Um, this is termed Sunderland type slipware as it was made in other areas as well. Although Sunderland is the centre of a large pottery, pottery industry from the 1790s through to around 1900 producing these wonderful redware vessels of which this divided baking dish is a good example with feathered white slip and a thick brown glaze which just extends over the edge of the rim. So S is for Sunderland type slipware. A to Z of ceramics. T is for tile which usefully in Latin is tegula which is also a T. Now this wonderful first century tile um, has a very specific name. It's a tegula mammata due to this projection. Now there would have been four projections so this is actually only one quarter of a complete tegula mammata. There's a projection in each corner of this massive tile. Um, so it really is a very big boy or should I say a very big girl because mammata um, literally means mammary in Latin due to the shape of the projection. Um, so this is a tile with a tit or a brick with a boob. However you want to phrase it, it's an interesting thing. So these were put against a wall um, and each of the projections gave you a little bit of space and they were used in Roman bathhouses and posh Roman villas where you had underfloor and inner wall heating and it just allowed a little gap to form in a cavity in the wall. So T is for tegula or T is for tile. A to Z of ceramics. U is for urn, cremation urn in this case. Um, I seem to have mislaid my large collection of cremation urns um, so I'll have to show you some examples from books. Um, there are two main periods when pottery urns were popular for cremation burials. The first is prehistoric in the Bronze Age when settlers from mainland Europe, who we call Beaker people, created some beautiful pottery urns to bury their dead, cremated bones, um, often with an S-shaped profile and zones of geometric decoration. Um, these begin about 2400 BC. Um, the second main period is also interestingly um, settlers from mainland Europe, in this case the Anglo-Saxons as they're known, um, from the 5th to the 7th century um, cremated their dead in urns. Um, a wider form, a wider selection of forms and shapes um, but often with bosses and stamped decoration. Um, there are 14,000 different stamps known. So U is for urn. A to Z of ceramics. V is for Victoria, Queen Victoria. Um, she had a long reign and there are a lot of ceramic souvenirs made with her image. Um, first up, quite an early one because Prince Albert is still here. Um, luster decoration, so probably from the northeast, 1840s, I would guess, and it says Victoria and Albert with a little bit of blobbed glaze decoration on it. Um, move forward 50 years, and we have a much more sombre jug, black, this is known as jetware, and it is embellished with transfer printing in gold with Jubilee portrait of Her Majesty and highlighted with little blobs of glaze um, for flowers and this commemorates her 60th anniversary in 1897 and because it's after 1891 on the bottom it says made in England 
due to the McKinley tariff which came in 1891. So Victoria. V is for Victoria. A to Z of ceramics. W is for wash basin. Now this find, which was made at a country pottery uh, in Redware, uh, late Victorian, early 20th century, had me completely foxed when I found it in a river estuary in Devon. Um, it obviously attached to the rim of a large bowl and it has two drainage holes and I eventually I worked out that it's a soap dish from a wash basin. So a large redware bowl uh, and on the rim they've looted on this tiny bowl as a soap dish with two drainage holes. W is for wash basin. A to Z of ceramics. X is for X-ray fluorescence or XRF, which is a technique used by archaeologists to determine the chemical and elemental composition of an object. Um, it's great for using on pottery, um, both for the fabric and the glaze composition, um, as it's cost effective, it's quick and most importantly it's non-destructive can be used on a complete vessel or just on shards and it works by irradiating the object with x-rays which reveals a specific fingerprint based on the elements um, which are in the object and this is really helpful as it can um, contribute towards dating an object or finding a place of manufacture. X is for x-ray fluorescence. A to Z of ceramics. Y is for Yorkshire. Now, although Staffordshire is considered the powerhouse of English pottery manufacture in the 18th and 19th centuries, there were many, many factories producing high quality ceramics in Yorkshire in the same period. Uh, now, this blue and white transfer printed soup bowl is marked Brameld on the back, which shows that it was made near Swinton in Yorkshire between 1820 and 1840. Um, it looks like a willow pattern, help if I had that the right way up, it looks like a willow pattern but this is actually the Brosley pattern. Um, difference being there are only two people instead of three people on the bridge, there are no lovebirds and there's much more pagoda action happening on this side of the plate. Y is for Yorkshire. A to Z of ceramics, Z is for zoomorphic. Now zoomorphic means in the shape of an animal, um, such as this leg, which I found on the Thames foreshore. A leg with a hoof on the end. Uh, this comes from a medieval vessel known as an aquamineal, uh, which was an animal shaped object with a handle on the back, which could be used to pour water at table. Um, here's a picture of one. Um, they're quite high status objects in the medieval period, although the pottery ones would have been a lot cheaper than the ones which were available in metals, even precious metals, if you had the money. Z is for zoomorphic. Well, I've enjoyed our A to Z of ceramics. Let's do it again someday.